We're switching cables. Hi, I'm Shannon Jackson, and I want to thank NATO and Shane and Sally and the entire Creative Time team for inviting an academic and teacher like me out to talk to you about two things. The first uh, is about form, and the second is about living. But let's take up the question of form first. What happens when artists and culture workers from truly different fields find themselves in the same room? Whose forms look formal to whom? I happen to come to socially engaged art from the field of performance, which means for me that I'm not only fixated on the uh, body-based, often solo, eruptions of live art, but also on Oh, sorry, on ensemble group-based uh, work in collectives. So the fact that I come to performance and the fact, come to this from performance and the fact that I feel I need to tell you what I think I mean by that means that I don't necessarily assume that we share a formal history. So this leads to the first point because it often seems to me to bring up some old terms that medium-specific barometers often affect our encounters with supposedly unmedium specific forms. Even if we all support, say, hybrid work, uh, we still use inherited forms and vocabularies for gauging its innovation. This is an inherited vocabulary right here. But if we take, say, something like the public art processes of temporary services who are represented in the archive and who let me use uh, documentation of their work for a book cover, I would imagine that the, those who encounter this work and measure its distance from something like sculpture or architecture might encounter it differently than those who measure or a store, or a word like dialogue has a different resonance for someone who came to this work from painting than it might for someone who started life as a playwright and thought that she knew what that word meant. So this also leads to my second point, which is that interestingly, I think that the deconstruction of some forms often involves the reconstruction of another form. So I think about past summit speaker Andrea Fraser and her institutional critiques of the museum uh, and the ways in which it was interpreted as a kind of dematerialized art practice. From others from a different corner of the room, they might also find this to be a highly unfamiliar material form, something like acting. Which is to say that in many ways the deconstruction of the museum involved the reuse of a traditional technique from the theater. Which leads to the, my other point. It also has to be said that sometimes when we find ourselves in these scenes of experiment, we can get impatient with each other's work. Innovation to some might look like a reinvented wheel to, the, to another, and I would not offer an example of that. to form bridges across different kinds of artistic and culture sectors. It often seems that hybrid work still circulates in unhybridized networks. This is the silo reference that it seems to me Anne was trying to suggest. That while there are always exceptions, uh, expanded theater artists often talk to other expanded theater artists, or expanded visual artists talk to other expanded visual artists. Um, and they're represented by different circuits, by gallery circuits and per performance festival circuits. Similarly, that art and social, uh, uh, social service workers who you to other
also perpetuated not only in critical circles, but say an institution like mine, a university where, where some end up on an art history syllabus, or some end up on a theater syllabus, or some end up on a social movement syllabus. Who gets called post-minimalist and who gets called post-Brechtian? So, just having said something about how we understand form or how it gets talked about, I want to think also about what that word living is, uh, which for me also means thinking about what life is and what we think we mean by that term. Is life liveness, a kind of er presence? Is life about interaction, participation, exchange? Is life about healing? about the affirmation and healing of broken lives in a broken world? Is it about conviviality, about radical intersubjectivity to some or just another art world party to others? Is it about disruption? Is it about tactical and activist forms of protest? It might be because I come from the very encumbered sphere of performance that I find it difficult to simply ask what life is without also asking what life needs, who gathers people together to experience a moment of liveness, who commits to sustained interaction, who, um, what forms of durational and durable structures sustain social health, who cleans up after the convivial party or the activist coup. It seems to me that a certain kind of care, foresight, coordination, and ensemble and cleanup is a, a part of the interdependent structures that are life and sustain it at once. They, you could say that life needs its forms. So I find myself, I think, um, most that it's in particularly important to put forward that view at a time when a coordinated and interdependent vision of the social seems particularly imperiled. Um, who coordinates, uh, uh, especially um, if you think about the fact that we're routinely asked right now, um, told right now, that the way to dynamize life is to get such social structures off our backs, uh, a kind of perspective that represses the degree to which such social structures have our backs. So for me, I find myself most interested in thinking about projects that focus on the sustaining of life, whether it be the global labor industry or the interdependent and unequal forms of public sanitation or of urban development with the Astor Gates. Far from compromising the integrity of art, it seems to me that these practices actually engage in complex and conceptual acts of structural engagement, that reimagine the weight, material, and temporal parameters of form itself. It seems to me that we need more opportunities to think rigorously about what form might be, that we need more opportunities to think about what living structures might be for a world in need of repair. Thank you.